Good evening, one and all present here. I, Anirudh, on behalf of First Year MHR, DJ Ashnook College, welcome you all for today's webinar on the topic, Strategic Human Resource Management. Let us all welcome our speaker for the day, Mr. Krishna Prasad Chakravarti. Mr. Krishna Prasad Chakravarti is an HR manager with over 19 years of experience in the areas of human resource management, decision support analytics, project management, and building winning teams. He has held multiple roles in human resources management, change management, organizational effectiveness, and HR business operations in companies ranging from startups to large size MNCs in India, US, and Singapore. He is also having experience in performance management, talent management, succession planning, employee engagement, strategic business partnerships, HR process automation, executive and wellness coach. Mr. Krishna Prasad Chakravarti has completed his Bachelor of Engineering from Annamalai University in the year 2002. Postgraduate Diploma in Business Administration from Annamalai University in the year 2005. He has also completed his Master's in Human Resource Management from Pondicherry University in the year 2005. He has also completed his Executive MBA from Libba in the year 2013. He is currently working as an HR business partner IT for Ford Motors Private Limited. Mr. Krishna Prasad Chakravarti was also the country manager HR for Ford Credit in India from 2017 to 21. Manager, HR Business Operations, Ford India Private Limited from 2013 to 17. Deputy Manager, HR, Ford Business Service Center from 2010 to 13. He was also the Manager, Human Capital Management, AMAC from 2009 to 10. Associate Manager, HR, Scope International Limited from 2007 to 9. Senior Analyst, Human Capital Management, Goldman Sachs India from 2006 to 7. Executive HR, HCL Technologies, BPO Services Limited from 2005 to 6. Senior Officer HR, Allsec Technologies from 2004 to 5, and also Senior Customer Support Officer, Allsec Technologies from 2002 to 4. Welcome you, sir. Now I'd like to introduce our Head of the Department, Human Resources Management, DJ Ashnok College, Dr. N.C. Martin. He's a highly experienced academician and has about 24 years of academic and administrative experience as Professor, HOD, Dean and Registrar. He did his post-graduation labor management and PhD in labor laws from Tamil Nadu Institute of Labor Studies. He started his career as a lecturer from the same institution. He has held various academic positions in various education institutions such as the Chandraprabhu Jain College as an assistant professor and HOD of MSW department, Sam's College of Engineering and Technology as a professor, HOD of MBA department. And he was also the placement officer for the entire Sam's Division College of Engineering and Technology. During his tenure, he has successfully placed engineering and management graduates in top-notch companies of manufacturing and service sector service sector industries across the country. He has, he has continued his career in St. Joseph's College of Arts and Science as the Dean of Academy and L.V. Prasad Film School, one of the best film schools in Asia, working as a registrar. He has acted as jury representing the Employers Federation of Southern India for the selection of companies for the best practices for the year 2018-19. He has added a number of research papers and publications to his credit and is an expert in the subject of labor legislations and industrial education. He has given sent him results in various HR specialized subjects in the university examination. Welcome you, sir. This meeting is recorded for educational purposes. In case of any doubts or questions, the participants can unmute themselves or type in the chat box. Now I request Dr. N.C. Martin, Head of Department Human Resources Management, to speak a few words about the topic for today. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So very happy uh, good evening to one and all present here. On behalf of management, uh, our secretary, Sri Ashokumar Mudraji, our principal doctor is uh, Captain Dr. Santosh Babu and uh, dear professor, students, HR fraternities and dear friends. I welcome you all and a special welcome to our uh, resource person for the day, Mr. Krishna Prasad Chakravarti, manager, human resource, business partner, the information technology, Ford Motor Private Limited. So today uh, it is our 73rd series of webinar, 73rd. So every week we used to conduct a webinar and sometimes we'll be having two webinars in a week. And all together we started from the last pandemic and uh, now things have been progressing well because of uh, a cooperation and coordination and support from the, uh, like, like the industry people like you, sir, as well as uh, with the coordination of our uh, uh, coordinators of faculty and uh, our students, organizers. So the topic uh, for the day is uh, strategic human resource management. So the strategic human resource management, uh, we can say uh, it is a process of linking the uh, human resource functions. So with the strategic objectives of the organization to improve uh, the overall organizational performance. So the strategies uh, are designed, uh, you know, the organization strategize uh, and they'll design. And mainly the purpose is to uh, meet the needs of the employees. So while promoting the, the company's goals. 
so we can say uh, the strategic human resource management uh, is a link between the company human resources and its strategies as well as its objectives and also the goals of the enterprise so the aim of the strategic human resource management uh, uh, is to uh, improve the business performance and also uh, in order to develop a suitable organizational uh, culture so in regard to strategic uh, human resource management so the hr manager has to play a very crucial role so he must play a very important role as a, a strategic uh, business partner as like our uh, sir is being here today so in framing uh, a suitable organizational policy uh, in regard to uh, recruitment training employee appraisals uh, promoting employee welfare standards and rewarding employees and so on so in regard to uh, uh, reducing the attrition level so we can say the hr manager needs to uh, adopt a strategic approach in order to develop and uh, retaining their employees uh, because you know to meet the needs of the companies you no know, in the long run uh, pers perspective so to meet the strategic objectives so the hr manager should first understand the goals and then uh, he should create a strategies so that will align with the objectives of the enterprise so that the goals of the human resource department uh, you know the reflect uh, and uh, the support the goals of the organization so usually uh, the shrm so uh, utilizes the talent and opportunity so within the human resource department uh, in order to make other departments stronger and also to be more effective so when will the organization will reap the benefits of success so it is only when the teams are working towards the same objectives and uh, for that the hr manager so will be evaluating the employees performance and decides the actions so that is required to improve their uh, value to the organization so we can say the strategic human resource management uh, uh, in connected to uh, strategizing the the objectives in order to meet the objectives so it uses the the various results based upon the analysis Uh, mainly to know uh, to uh, frame develop uh, the chart techniques uh, to address the the various uh, the gray areas of employees where uh, they are not performing so by doing so the organization uh, increases the employee satisfaction that is very important and also uh, it leads to better work culture uh, it enhances the uh, rates of uh, customer satisfaction and on the whole uh, we can say it improves uh the productivity of the employees so it sets for the production so with this brief note i hand over the session to a resource person and who is uh, really suitable for to make this webinar very you uh, know uh, understanding and very uh, make the student to understand on this uh, area of uh, strategic human resource management and make it very interesting one thank you sir thank you all the best uh oh, thank you martin sir uh it's always a pleasure to talk to you and it's a privilege to uh, talk about the subject in front of you uh, and there are a lot of academicians and professors here uh, so if you make any mi mistake from an academy point of view please uh, uh, tolerate with me but uh, i'm going to get the corporate perspective of the entire subject uh, uh, th that's my role here is what i believe uh, that only we need sir only from cost uh, market perspective only okay. because we academician we, we used to teach what is in textbook but only you people uh, know you can share their experience in order to corporate perspective and uh, perspective thank you sir thank you for the opportunity martin sir let me share my screen if that's okay uh yes. i did tell uh 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 tulsi that i'm not a very uh, uh ppt kind of a person but still uh, uh I, i have one uh slide prepared and that would actually summarize everything just give me one second and
I hope you can see my screen. You all can see my screen. Yes, sir. So. Perfect. Uh, so uh, imagine that all of you are taking a role of uh, a CHRO in an organization. So I'm going to take this conversation from that perspective. So uh, all, all of you are uh, donning the role of uh, CHRO in an organization. So what all you need to do uh, to implement a strategic HRM uh, initiative in your organization is what I would probably cover in the next eight steps. So that is what you need to do, or probably a 101 kind of a, a logbook for you to refer to uh, for uh, you to su successfully implement a strategic HRM initiative in your organization. So as a CHRO, the first step that you need to do is, as Martin Sar mentioned, develop a thorough understanding of your company's objective. It may be any industry, it can be automotive, it can be uh, IT, uh, it can be uh, software as a service, it can be hospitality. But uh, the first important step of a CHRO to implement a strategic HRM practice is to develop a thorough understanding of your company's objectives. When I say company's objectives, uh, it includes the vision, mission and purpose statement. Now, not only that, also the goals that is set for the next five years or the next three years in terms of uh, 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 break even or in terms of making profit, et cetera, et cetera. So in this perspective, uh, the HR uh, person or the CHRO works closely hand in hand with the CEO of the organization and the CFO. Typically, we call them the trident. Uh, if, you, if you look at it very closely, there can be a lot of other uh, department heads like purchasing head, IT head, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, there are three people who are closely connected with the organization in terms of starting an organization, running an organization, or even closing an organization. So the three people would be uh, the head of the organization, which is typically the CEO or MD. The second one would be the CFO, who runs the finances of the organization. The third one would be uh, uh, CHRO, who are typically the gatekeepers of the strategy, objectives, and culture of the organization. So. CHRO, along with the CEO and CFO, develops a thorough understanding of the company's objective, which is typically the vision, mission, purpose of the company and the goals set for the next few years in terms of earnings and revenue uh, and, and profits. So that is the first job of a person uh, uh, trying to uh, implement a strategic HR, HRM initiative. Now, once you have that in place, uh, what you do is you introspect yourself. I mean, when I say yourself, yourself on the team, and try to understand the capability of the HR team. So to uh, achieve the vision and the mission and to achieve the purpose of the organization and to uh, go for the goal that is set, uh, which is in the next three years or five years, achieve uh, this much profit or break even or whatever it is, what the CHRO does is typically goes back and ev uh, evaluates the HR capability. When I say HR capability, it's just not the HR team, but the overall people capability of the organization whether we have the right resources in the organization to uh, pursue that uh, vision, mission, and goal. Uh, what do we need to do if we don't have what we need to do in case we have excess? And what do we need to do in case we have right? So this is something that the CHRO needs to take back as an assignment and evaluate the HR capability. The moment uh, the CHRO evaluates the HR capability, uh, the, these are the following scenarios that will come in front of him. Okay, there is a there is an opportunity to enhance the HR capability. So what the CHRO typically does is, okay, we have people in the organization, but we don't have these many skills to achieve the particular uh, vision, mission, and purpose. So let's go to the market and hire those people. So that is that is one strategy the HR strategic HR, uh, uh, HR business partner may adapt. Otherwise, what they would end up doing is let's reskill our employees in terms of skilling them, upskilling them, cross-skilling them. Uh, to make sure they are uh, having the capability to deliver the company's objective. The third option would be uh, how we can probably partner with another company like an agency or uh, purchase services to ensure that we get the right resources inside the organization to deliver the company's objective. So these are certain things that will be in the hands of the CHRO uh, to ensure that they evaluate the HR capability. Now, once you evaluate the HR capability, you evaluate the HR capacity in light of your people's goals. Uh, are you equipped enough in terms of achieving whatever you set to go? For example, I spoke about three scenarios, right? Uh, going and recruiting from the market, uh, people from the market so that they have the right skills inside their organization to go and achieve the purpose, vision, and mission. That is scenario number one. The scenario number two is uh, uh, reskilling 
uh, cross skilling up skilling people inside the organization to ensure that you have the right right people to uh, run the purpose or vision mission and the third one is partnering with the purchase services or agency company to ensure that you have the right capability to achieve that does your hr team have the capacity in light of the goals so that is something that the chro need to analyze and work towards so if the if the chro does not have that then it is the responsibility of the chro to build that in terms of uh, uh, building a hr organization which should be in sync with, or in tandem with the light of your goals uh, typically uh, the steps in that would be having a robust talent acquisition team having a robust uh, talent management team and i say talent management team the lnod team the learning and development team uh, having a good uh, hr business partner team which would uh, find the needs of training and other things and also having a cross cross functional team which will build relationship between the other teams including purchasing finance um, uh, cfo's office or ceo's office so this is what uh, typically the hr person does once they analyze the people capability and out of the people capability analyze the hr capacity and decide what they need to do in terms of uh, traveling to uh, uh, meet their goals so once that is done what they do is uh, they estimate the company's future in terms of hr's requirements here's where they calculate the demand and supply okay tomorrow i there is a new project from ford us and the ford uh, and the project uh, um insists that we need uh, uh let's say to uh, 34 30 to 40 full stack java developers to ensure there is a there's a software that goes inside a car and uh, uh, we need to have that uh, 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 that many number of java developers inside the organization so what typically the hr organization does or the chro or the hr bp does is he understands the demand versus supply he first analyzes the skill inside the organization there may be uh, 12 to uh, 15 uh, full stack ja java developers already in the inside the organization now what you can do is you can see how you can uh, develop the skills of other interested people who would want to move into the organization that is a strategy called the hr guy takes because uh, if hr guy immediately decides to go external to recruit then he is spending the organization's money which will impact the company's objective so a smart hr guy would probably look into the organization to see if the demand versus supply is being met already inside the organization so if he feels that out of the 30 12 are already inside the organization i need to go for another 18 i can achieve that by uh, reskilling or skilling or training a set of 18 people inside the organization then he is smart enough to achieve the goal without being spending uh, into uh, going into the market that is one way of achieving the goal now let's assume that uh, the scenario is not very uh, green or rosy and uh, you don't you don't have the capacity to train 18 people inside the organization that's when the hr uh, business partner goes outside and picks talent from outside and let's assume a scenario where uh, uh, we have something going on called great resignation where there is a war for talent at this point of time so finding a full stack java developer is not that easy in the market so in that case, then we are losing time and then the company's objectives gets delayed. So what would a strategic or smart HRBP do? He would go to his business partner and he will say, boss, I analyze the skill inside the organization. The skill is not uh, uh, apt enough to uh, run the organization. So there are two options. Either you see whoever is interested inside the organization to go into the Java team, have them trained. That way we reduce a lot of cost. Or if you have the budget and amount to invest in going externally, give me the give me the money. I will invest in that, and then I will ask my talent acquisition team to go out and recruit those people. That is option number two. And then if you feel that if you don't have the money and time, you need solutions instantly, then you need to go and advise your business partner, saying that why don't we partner with an agency or a purchase service organization which is specialist in Java full stack developers, have an agreement with them bring these temp resources on board have them execute that particular plan and then seize the agreement so these are the different options are uh, that as a hr person you need to throw in front of your uh, uh, business person so that it is aligned with the cost benefit angle of the organization skill building angle of the organization at the same time the strategic company objectives so this way you will be able to pursue your target and if 
let's say you decide that you are going to bring in uh, 18 people from the market you're going to invest in talent acquisition and then you're going to bring in uh, 18 people from the market that's when you decide the tools required for employees uh, uh, to come in to be recruited to be engaged and to be completing the job so when i say to be coming in then that's when you invest in uh, softwares like uh, linkedin hire uh, kenexa uh, typically large companies do that or uh, if you're a small company then you go partner with a people uh, consulting organization where they can find talent from across uh, different cities and get you those 18 people who's required for uh, completing your company's objective so that is with respect to talent acquisition now talent acquisition is just the first step so once you find these people then you have the obvious next step of uh, uh, having a salary conversation with them and then giving them the right salary so that they are not feeling uh, less bestowed in, in compared to other competitors for that you need to have the good compensation budget typically in organizations called the structural budget or structural uh, funding so where uh, you have x amount towards your development and y amount towards your uh, people hiring and other things and once you have that you uh, you offer that to the new employee set of 18 employees who are supposed to come into the organization and they will be grounded in the organization I mean, when i say grounded it's not putting them down it is anchoring them in the organization so how do employees are how are employees anchor in an organization typically the uh, way to anchor an employee in the organization is called onboarding so that's the conduit between an employee who's coming from outside to, to settling that employee in the organization onboarding is just uh, may, may appear to be a simple term but it's it's one of the most effective ways of anchoring an employee to the organization and it goes a long way in terms of retaining the employee also so there are again onboarding softwares onboarding uh, professionals who focus only on detailing the company's um, uh, companies give away to the employee in terms of benefits uh, uh, compensation uh, talent uh, uh, mapping for the organization uh, uh, future goals and uh, the opportunities inside the organization so these are the different things that the onboarding covers and it does start the long journey of engagement of that person to the organization so that is uh, something that is very important and that is one tool that the hr needs to determine uh, in terms of uh, uh, the course of completing the company's objective so once you have the employee inside the organization the employee is onboarded and anchored in the organization then you need tools to uh, uh, help employee complete the job when i say complete the job uh, what typically happens is every employee in an organization sets up a goal that as Martin Sar mentioned, aligns with the company's goal. So it, it is not uh, it is not direct. Every employee may not have a direct link with the company's goal, but it's a cadence driven uh, approach where an employee will have a goal that is aligned with the larger teams, uh, that is their supervisors, and the larger team will have a goal that is aligned with the departments, and the department will have a goal that is aligned with the company's objective. So typically, once the employee is hired, onboarded, the HR team, the strategic HRM or HRBP or uh, the HR team drives an employee to set up an objective for himself, which is aligned to the company's objective. That's what uh, Martin Sar mentioned during the start of this call. So that every step the employee takes uh, in terms of completing the objective is directly linked to us achieving the company's objective. And that's how performance is tracked, right? So you set up an objective during the start of the year and those are the list of objectives that you have in front of you and you set out to reach those objectives or complete those objectives and typically it happens between jan to december the uh, the uh, uh, calendar year and uh, what happens is every three months some companies take three months some companies take six months and some companies do it annually they compare the progress set towards the objectives uh, and what is achieved and they give a feedback to the employee saying that hey boss uh, this is what you set out to to achieve but seems like you're lacking here why don't you push that pedal a little much uh, hey you're doing excellently well here please sustain that uh, particular uh, intensity that you're showing towards that objective hey i think you're not doing this objective at all focus a lot on those objectives so these are the conversations that the hr uh, manager facilitates in terms of a supervisor have has with the uh, employee Typically, um, in, in the olden days, what it used to be happening in the presence of the HR uh, uh, business partner, but uh, since companies and teams have grown wider and big, 
I think uh, we are equipping the supervisors to be handling people increasingly well. And that's another objective uh, and strategy that HR has. How HR can't be uh, uh, omnipresent like God, right? So HR has to be, uh, their the spirit has to be omnipresent. And that's where we kind of outsource a little bit of our capabilities into the people managers as well. And that's where we tell our people leaders saying that, boss, you need to uh, have an, a constructive conversation with your employee in terms of analyzing the objective against uh, the achievement. And then if there are any pitfalls, the support required, offer that to them. And in case you feel you are uh, feeling challenged there, please approach each other. That's what we do. Now, this is how you engage the performance of an employee. But otherwise, there are different ways in which you help the employees complete the job. For example, if an employee is working for X number of days together, uh, he's a human being another day, right? So he can't work like a machine. So you, even machines get uh, reprised. Even machine gets a uh, break in terms of uh, uh, shutdown and maintenance and other things. So human beings typically require that off period or uh, leave period. And that's where the strategic HRM comes up with the different policies and procedures that supports the employee. And one of the classic ones that you would have read in your subjects and you will keep reading in second year as well is the leave policy and what the statutes demand in terms of minimum number of leaves and what are the other fancy leaves that some of the big organizations give to their employees so that they are engaged in their job. So uh, an employee works for two months, uh, ask him to take a casual leave. So you, you will have a casual leave policy determining that an HR is responsible for creating that. An employee works for six months together. He wants to take a break and he wants to go out uh, uh, to Uti or Kodekanal with his family. I don't know that if you can go during Corona times, but uh, I'm talking about the pre-Corona times. Or if he, if he wants to go and spend some time in his native, there is something called uh, privilege leave or uh, entitled leave, which is given to the employee as a benefit as he starts accumulating the number of days in the organization. And then if, a, if an employee wants to take uh, uh, just take a break because he's not feeling well, then there is sick leave and there is hospitalization leave, enhanced sick leave. Different companies have different strategies in terms of uh, uh, engaging their employees by giving them uh, time off or break from their work. In fact, uh, my company has uh, now given uh, a break called wellness break. So wellness is a, a very hot topic in the market right now, where uh, for companies are focusing to uh, take care of the wellness objectives of employees, because uh, we all are going through a, a stage uh, in the corporate life called uh, where sedentary lifestyle is eating our wealth, uh, our uh, uh, health. So some of the companies are focusing on something called wellness needs. So these are the different ways by which you help employees complete their job by rejuvenating themselves and coming back to the job. And then finally, how do you keep your employees engaged by different initiatives, by having uh, work groups, by having uh, 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 similar people coming together called ERGs, employee resource groups or support groups. And this is the way by which you engage your employees and offer them different initiatives uh, so that they are engaged to the company. So. As a strategic HRM or as a HR person or a HR VP, you are supposed to determine the tools required for employees to be uh, retained, engaged and complete the job. Not only that, uh, you can't just throw policies to the employees and then uh, be rest assured that uh, everything is taken care of. You, go, you need to go and periodically knock their doors. And how do you knock their doors? By uh, catching their pulse. Uh, typically, what companies do is they... they uh, drive surveys every year. Uh, they go and reach out to their employees and then they analyze the data that comes, comes out of the uh, survey and they slice and dice it and then break it by departments, break it by managers. And that is helpful in terms of giving feedback to the managers. And who drives it? Strategic HR. So we believe that it's very important for uh, uh, organizations to uh, knock the doors of employees, catch their pulse and understand what is going on in their mind Okay, we've rolled out a set of policies and procedures that supports employee. Uh, even then, are the employees happy? No, we need to knock their doors and understand if they're happy or not. So that is very, very important. That applies for uh, an organization, a country, uh, or uh, even uh, 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 global organizations like United Nations as well. So when they roll out a policy, they need to go back to their employees, citizens, or global citizens to understand whether it is working out fine or not. So that is a typical engagement method. Uh, by which employees are feeling empowered to give feedback to the organization. So who drives it? Strategic HR. Now, once you do it, you implement these strategies and ensure that you have 
an evaluation and corrective action in terms of driving that. So you cannot be rest assured saying that, okay, I've implemented all these things. I'm going to sit back and relax. That's not going to happen, right? So typically some organization, what they do is uh, they call an external auditor and then uh, they ask if there's uh, HR practices are strong enough in terms of the current goals or in light for in light with the current uh, benchmark that they have across the uh, across the industry. Uh, but uh, some companies, what they do is they uh, they hire a person who typically does this uh, year on year in terms of uh, uh, competent benchmarking, uh, engagement benchmarking, or they participate in some surveys like Great Place to Work, which helps them give a give an index, an engagement index or experience index. And then they uh, focus on uh, uh, improving that year on year. So they get a score when compared to other companies and then they get their improvement points or opportunities or strength points. And based on which they, they, uh, they chart out a plan to ensure that they uh, work on this and make that better. So that is called the evaluation and corrective action. On top of it, the most important thing is invest strongly. Give me one second. Uh, culture, employee and stakeholder experience. Now, when you talk about culture, uh, a lot of people, a lot of students, when I, when I, when I uh, used to take class in Liba, they used to call me, what is culture? I mean, does every, is, is it necessary that every company needs to uh, have a culture and other things? Uh, what, what, what uh, I used to give us a reply, I mean, maybe very silly uh, or naive, but in layman's language, if you want your uh, organizations to be functioning like a family you don't want people to quit your family and go off you need something that binds everything together everybody together right so that binding factor is called the culture and culture is a company's identity so as a strategic hr business partner or hr guy you are uh, obligated to invest strongly in culture uh, to draw some examples i think uh, there are big companies uh, which invest in culture and they even tag that to their uh, or link it to that tagline. Walmart, for example, has this, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's called connecting people to product. So that's what they do, right? But when the tagline connecting to people to product dissipates into their organization, that's when they uh, kind of build what is needed to bond their employees based on the particular tagline or probably they uh, have a lot of uh, strategic initiatives uh, 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 in terms of cascading or uh, sub bullet points built under those uh, particular uh, tagline in terms of driving the culture. That becomes their mantra. Uh, everywhere they go, they see this connecting people to product and the subsequent points to uh, drive that, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, similarly, FedEx has uh, people, service, profit. There are three mantras. So people comes first, then service, then profit. So which means they are uh indicating saying that profit comes last whereas people and service comes first and that becomes the cultural mantra of the organization and uh, ford for example uh, used to have go further and then we have something called ford plus um where where we ask our employees to challenge and compete innovate disrupt function as a family um do the right thing from an ethics point of view so these are cultural points that you need to invest very strongly constantly communicate so that all your employees are on the same page and uh, it, it rings at the back of them and even in their sleep they should get up and say that uh, okay i need to be uh, doing the right thing only i need to make sure that uh, i need to challenge status quo i need to make sure that i focus on innovation all these things should be running in their mind constantly and how do you do it hr as a strategic initiative needs to drive it into the deeper sense of the employees by constantly cascading uh, constantly communicating with the employees uh, uh, that's something that uh, you need to invest strongly. The other one that you need to invest strongly is employee experience. Uh, most of the academic uh, 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 people in this call would know uh, that it used to be employee engagement in the past, but uh, uh, the needle has been taken beyond employee engagement. And uh, currently we have something called employee experience. So the moment an employee steps into the organization, or even before that, even when an employee is being interviewed for a particular role, what kind of experience are you going to give that employee? There are companies, as I know, that uh, if they make the um, the candidate wait, uh, then they uh, 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 send a sorry card to them, the candidate. That is the value that they are trying to drive. So gone are those days where uh, recruiters and people in the company uh, 
uh, are sitting on high perch trees and uh, asking employees to apply. Gone are those days. Now, uh, candidates and employees are sitting here and they are in demand by the organization because uh, a country like India is booming and there are a lot of companies that are being set, skills being uh, invested in, uh, uh, a lot of skill, new skills being driven. And in that light, companies need to be innovative or invest very strongly in the employee slash candidate experience also. That's why com some companies, if they uh, uh, delay the interview process or result, they send a sorry card. Such a drastic change in how uh, uh, recruitments used to be conducted, right? So that's an example. Similarly, uh, the employee gets hired. Some companies, I don't know if you have noted, uh, probably your seniors would have shown you pictures in LinkedIn and other things. They give a kit, onboarding kit. That is part of employee experience. I mean, it's a very tactical initiative, but it comes largely under uh, uh, how you drive employee experience. So the kit will have a bag, a laptop, a, a mug, uh, a, a night lamp, and all those things. So these are the things that you use to uh, uh, catapult your employee experience by uh, anchoring them in the organization. Now, once they're inside the organization, give them the right uh, environment. Uh, make sure that they're psychologically safe inside the organization. They're not being harassed. They're not being bullied. And uh, uh, they are having the right wellness environment in the organization. They're having the right tools to support the organization in terms of uh, uh, deliverables and they're having the right training program. So all these comprises of the employee experience. And the last one is, of course, the stakeholder experience. So you will have uh, partners working with you to ensure that your uh, employees are uh, being served right. For example, you will have an agency which recruits uh, people for you. You'll have an agency which designs your wellness strategy for you or engagement strategy for you. You'll have an agency which um, uh, which drives the survey for you. So make sure that you also give them the right experience so that these partners are traveling along with you in terms of delivering your company's objective. So I'll probably pause there, stop sharing. And uh, these are some of the eight steps that as a CHRO, I would take in terms of ensuring that my company's objectives are being met. Uh, probably I will stop sharing and then I will take questions. I don't know if I've finished well in advance, uh, but this is what I wanted to share to all of you. Yes. Uh, sir, we have a question from RP. Uh, what are the important factors do you consider when you build a strategic plan and how will you inform about this to your team? Give me one second, uh, Anil. Just give me one second. Yes. Uh, I, I'll answer Arti in, in a second. Uh, I need to be off video for uh, a couple of minutes, but I will answer Arti's question. So just going back to Arti's question. Uh, what are the important factors do you consider when you build a strategic plan? And how will you inform about this to your about this to your team? So I think Arti, I, I did cover this as part of the uh, uh, the eight points. One of one important factor is the tools required for employees to be retained, engaged, and complete the job. That is something that I would consider uh, individually. And what are all are required to implement the human resource management strategy? Uh, plus, also uh, financially, how well are you built in terms of investing in culture and employee experience? So these are some of the things that some of the factors that I will consider to build a strategic plan. And how will I inform the team? I will have constant communication. So uh, communication is one very important uh, aspect of engagement. Uh, you need to have a communication strategy as well. Uh, some companies have templated communication and they'll have diverse communication. 
one is through uh, templated emails, uh, CEO's message or MD's message or CHRO's message. The other one would be town halls, regular town halls where employees participate and also give them an opportunity to ask questions and answer those questions. So uh, these are the ways by which I will inform this uh, to my teams. Another way by which I can I'll inform the teams by cascade. So I inform a set of uh, skill team leaders and they take the opportunity to inform uh, their teams and it goes all the way down. I hope I answered your question, Arti. Is it okay? Uh, participants can unmute themselves or ask further questions in the chat box. Kiran says that my voice was low. I hope I did correct it. I didn't see that message coming because I was presenting. I think it's a network issue from their side, sir. It was perfect from your side. Okay. Thank you, Anil. Any other questions? Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, Vimal. Yes, sir. So, uh, diversity is also a part of a culture, right? Employee diversity. So, the, so inclusion diversity, so how will you strategize so that the employee didn't feel that they are divided and they can be a family? So, will diversity have some kind of conflicts if you are in the culture? No, I, I, Vimal, uh, I, I must really appreciate you for bringing a point that I actually missed mentioning. As part of employee experience, uh, diversity is a very important uh, factor. Uh, in fact, uh, companies are employing diversity consultants to ensure that they have uh, the right mix of people in the organization. So thank you for bringing that point, Vimal. Uh, in terms of including diversity as part of the objectives, uh, uh, you need to have a clear objective for diversity itself uh, for you to go and achieve uh, it's, it's not just bringing different set of peoples together uh, that is diversity but beyond diversity you need to uh, build a sense of belonging for every individual in the organization whoever it may be it may be uh, people from different states religions um, or different uh, countries or uh, different gender different generations uh, different uh, abilities you need to build uh, an inclusive and belonging environment environment for for uh, 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 for these uh, for all type of employees and that's when you can call yourself an equal opportunity employee now what typically uh, what typically um, companies do is uh, they set a target for diversity for example uh, 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 out of 18 software engineers i would uh, focus on bringing nine women software engineers and i'm just quoting the same example that we had from the past uh, that is one way of doing it. Out of the out of the 18 software engineers, I will ensure that I have three people who are physically challenged. Out of 18 software engineers, I will ensure that I'll have one transgender or uh, uh, one bisexual or transsexual. I'm just I'm just uh, opening the possibilities. So these are targets that is set to bring in different type of people or one. Uh, uh, a target can be how I will have people representing across India, you know, different uh, language speaking, different uh, uh, food habits uh, uh, bearing people. That is one type of setting a target for diversity. And uh, your job is not over when you bring in different set of, set of people. Your job is to ensure, HR's job is to ensure that they're all living and working in harmony, like a symphony, right? So to for that to happen, you need to have the right resources in place, your HR, BP and your business should have the right mindset um, or to treat everybody the same way. Uh, we recently have had a training program exclusively focused focus for the supervisors, uh, which talked about unconscious bias. So what is unconscious bias? Uh, unconscious bias is without even realizing that you will get inclined to a particular uh, 
uh, set of people. So that is unconscious bias. So our supervisors in in my company, at least, they are constantly drilled to ensure that they don't have unconscious bias and they are uh, able to treat everybody properly. But no, no initiative is foolproof. You will have mistakes. And for those mistakes to be analyzed, corrected, opportunities identified, and then rectified, you have something called DEI audit. In DEI, DEI audit, people are uh, uh, asked questions, uh, they, their feedback is taken, and then they are, uh, 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 they're, they are recorded anonymously, and then corrective action is taken to ensure that uh, such mistakes are not repeated. So it's a fantastic question, Vimal. I really must appreciate you for being there. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any more questions? By the way, uh, just uh, listening back to Vimal's answer, the answer for Vimal, I said DEI. Now, DEI means uh, it's not DNI, diversity and inclusion. So there is something called equity inside. Now, uh, most of you would have read uh, about equity, but I'm just uh, trying to ensure that uh, I have that created here. So beyond diversity and inclusion, inclusion talks about belonging. Also creating a platform for people who are not having the opportunity to ensure that they compete with the others. That's called equity. So... Uh, I'm not able to bring a classic example from the corporate side. Typically, uh, uh, one example that I can give is how you create an environment for women to go and apply for leadership position. That's called equity. How, how you have focused uh, talent management program or trainings for women to ensure that they come out of their shell and then apply for leadership positions. That's called equity. So equity is creating a platform for people so that they compete with others on the same page. Just to add to whatever I said. Okay, any other questions? Thank you, uh, Mohammed Mustafa. I hope I was useful. Strategies awesome. for employee retention. That's a question from Kiran. Sorry, Anirudh, you were telling something? No, sir. I was about to read the question in the chat. Okay. Employee retention has got a uh, lot of strategies. Uh, some of them can be long term, some of them can be short term. Uh, most of them are knee jerk, uh, Kiran. Uh, most of them are knee jerk, to be very frank with you. So, if you really need to retain an employee, you need to think long term in the sense you need to invest in the employee, grow their skills, draw out a career plan for them, uh, keep communicating the strength and opportunity in the career plan, etc. etc. But uh, most often, it does not happen for all employees in the organization, right? So what uh, uh, some companies have is they give uh, uh, Insta bonuses, retention bonuses, IBI. IBI is uh, how they increase the band and uh, within the same grade, they give them additional salary. Uh, and sometimes what they do is they give promotion if the employee is promotable. Uh, but uh, monitor monitorly, I think uh, employees get a retention bonus or uh, a retention hike. Uh, to uh, retain their employees but the most apt way to retain an employee which will give long-term result is to skill them have a clear career path for them and ensure that we don't lose them i hope i answered your question Kiran. perfect Uh, hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, so, just I have one question. Like, uh, how do we uh, brand ourselves in today's market? 
Thank you, Prasanna. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if I'm the right person to answer that, uh, but uh, if you really need to brand yourself in today's market, then you need to know your strength and opportunities. So uh, you need to be mindful of what is your strength and opportunities. For example, if you uh, ask me, how do I brand myself? Uh, I know what my strength and opportunities are. I know that I can be uh, eloquent. I know I can be. Uh, I know I can read. But uh, if you give me a job that is uh, that that requires you to be me to be structured, uh, organized, I will fail. So I'll set myself for failure. And it's not that I should not learn those skills. I can learn those skills, but I need to ensure that I need to clearly have in my mind what are my strengths and opportunities. The moment you realize your strength, you put or you uh, nominate yourself for any job that demands your strength. So obviously, if you, if you are a part of a job that demands your strength, you will be successful. And use it as a canvas for, for uh, promoting yourself internally and externally. So these are the three steps that I would advise. First of all, identify your strengths and opportunities and uh, keep addressing your opportunities, but make sure that you bag a job that will address your strength. And I'm sure if you bag a job that will address your strength, you will be doing well. And once you do well in that particular opportunity, use that as a canvas to promote yourself uh, both internally and externally. These are the three steps that I would, I would, personally undertake in terms of branding myself, uh, Prasanna. I hope I answered your question. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, good evening, sir. So I just had a little more of a general uh, question for you. So um, uh, from what I've seen from the uh, introduction that was given, it, it, it would seem that you've been at Ford for a long time, right? So uh, my question is this, like how much of um, association did you need to have to do with the product that your the company you work for makes? Or is being a HR at a company as such, does it entail you to have to know the product more? Like did you need to have technical knowledge to function properly there? Or was that just, you know, a secondary and not as vital as knowing the core uh, duties of a HR? A great question, Narvin. Uh, in fact, uh, just to give you a little more, little bit, little more insight on my profile, if we, before Ford, if you look at my profile, I used to jump like a monkey. Uh, but uh, somehow Ford uh, uh, got me, uh, uh, it was like homecoming for me. Uh, and one reason why uh, I felt like a homecoming is because I connected more to the product in Ford when compared to other companies. Uh, that may be one, one reason what, what had me anchored to uh, Ford. And, and your question about, as a HR person, should you be adept of the knowledge of the product that your company is serving? I would say yes. You don't have to know the coding. You don't have to know the uh, in, uh, uh, science behind internal combustion engine or the electrical vehicle and other things. But at least you should know what your company is uh, uh, doing, wh what are the different products, what is the, what is the peripheral science behind that product and what the, what are the different skill teams involved are working together in terms of getting that product out uh, you should definitely know that uh, that will help you understand your skill team people even better i'll give you a small example uh, if you take uh, my company that is ford motor private limited we don't manufacture cars but we take care of all the knowledge process of ford across the country across the world and one of the process that we support is uh, uh, accounting. Now, these accounting people, they have to process invoices real time uh, 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 to ensure that it hits the book in the US timing or the North America timing. So some of them work in night shift. So I need to understand their job and their uh, hardships and what they do to ensure that I take care of them. For example, one way I take care of them is ensure that they have good, uh, good health. Uh, uh, by constantly working in night shift, what are what hardships that they go through and other things. The second one that they can I can take care is, uh, take care is in terms of uh, uh, enhancing their knowledge. Uh, what are the skills that they need to do, and what are the uh, courses that they need to uh, undergo so that they become better accounting or finance person. Uh, what are the certifications? Do they need to do, do the, does the company need to sponsor for their CMA or CPA certification? 
so that they go to the next level. So these are things that I need to analyze. So if I'm a, if I'm taking care of the IT team, then I need to understand what are the different uh, IT products that we have inside the organization, application that we have, what are the skills that we are bringing inside the organization to ensure that we're delivering. So to that level, at least, you need to know what business you're supporting. Uh, and uh, the connect between the employee and the uh, business, if it's strong enough, and I think they don't find a reason to go out, is what I believe, uh, Arvind. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, I guess there are not any more questions from the students. Can we proceed to the vote of thanks, sir? More than happy. Now I call upon Tita Sri, first MHRM, to deliver the vote of thanks. Hello, sir. Good evening. So, before you're a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is about helping others grow. I, Tirtha Shri of first year MAHRM, take this wonderful opportunity to thank our esteemed speaker, Mr. Krishna Prasad Chakravarti, Manager HR, HRBP, Information Technology, Ford Motors, Private Limited, for sharing his valuable insights and knowledge on the topic, Strategic Human Resource Management. I would like to share a few key takeaways from today's session. So implementation of, a, uh, of an effective strategic human resource management starts by acquisition of talent. The CHRO first understands the company's objectives, its vision and mission, followed by which uh, the overall people capability is evaluated and analyzed in terms of goals to be achieved. Next, the company's future HR requirements are estimated where the demand and supply are taken into consideration. The tools required to engage employees, employees and facilitate task completion is determined. And finally, the strategy is implemented, implemented. It is also essential to invest in the culture of the organization to ensure better implementation of the strategy. We, the future HRs, would really work on this understanding provided by our lively speaker. Sharing is caring is an age-old proverb. True to this thought, I would like to thank the pillar of our PG Department of HRM, HOD Dr. N.C. Martin, for arranging this webinar and Professor Sneha for her support to organize this webinar, providing us with an enlightening tour to the pragmatic arena of HR. Finally, I extend my gratitude to the participants from various professions and students. Kindly fill up the feedback form which is provided in the chat box with your name and email ID. Stay safe, stay vaccinated. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Thank you, sir. Good job on the summary, Tita. Thank I you. Feel happy. Thank <laughs> you. I feel happy that my service is done. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tulsi. Thank you, Madam Sir, and others. Thank you, sir.